Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and several other topics related to nature and its conservation on our channel The Geo Ecologist. If you are new to this channel, please go to our playlist section for the earlier videos and also please do support us by liking it, by subscribing it and also if possible please join to support us. Now, in today's video in hydrology series, we are going to talk about a very important thing that has come up in the recent years and that's about the hydrological cycle changing its patterns and where we are concerned where humans impact on hydrological cycle is concerned and in return how is it impacting the our ecosystems so let's understand what's happening and also if you remember in recent times we have seen urban flooding being more common especially with extreme events like cloud bursts and several others so let's understand the details in this video so this is going to be a really important video and please watch it till the end and also if possible at the end press a like button leave a comment and also do share these videos with others as well so now let's learn So now let's observe the human impact on hydrological cycle now I understand this one important thing here that human and hydrological cycle has a two way relationship if we impact hydrological cycle in turn hydrological cycle will have an impact on our development and dubai flooding of recent times is one of the best examples what has happened so we'll be talking about dubai flooding as well in the end of this video so keep watching till the end now let's understand how humans impact the water cycle and i'm sure you have seen several such flow diagrams when you're studying for hydrology so if you observe all our activities right from our urban to rural activities everything is related to water because human beings and water go together right right from our civilizations but what is happening of late after industrial revolution in last 200 years we have changed the pattern of utility and that's where the problem lies so if you observe directly or indirectly we have been crossing paths with hydrological cycles natural balance so first important thing is to start with humans directly change the dynamics of water cycle through direct manipulation and if you observe we are creating reservoirs we are changing the catchment area of the river and also polluting it in several ways so if you observe building dams for water storage withdrawing water from lakes and rivers for industrial and agriculture as well as for domestic purposes and of course humans indirectly impact hydrological cycle through actions that is related to global warming if you observe we have been doing deforestations for several years now so centuries so this is in concern now first point is hydroelectricity so everyone knows that the need for energy is growing day by day and we are going to look into the non-conventional sources of energy and hydroelectricity is one of them and it's also considered to be very nature friendly at one point but the problem is that to produce hydroelectricity we have to also scar the original nature so look at this particular image a river channel becoming dry after diversion of channels so hydroelectricity is important for our energy but then at the same time if you observe it's changing the land use pattern and at a greater level so if you observe the first thing is it alters the flow of natural flow of the rivers and streams and there is a impact downstream right so water availability sediment transportation and of course if there is siltation so we have examples of siltation induced earthquakes as well right it changes the isostatic equilibrium so this is important that you know this is disrupting natural rhythm of water cycle in different areas next important point is reservoir creation itself so if you observe what it takes to create reservoirs of course we are changing the magnitude of the streams also storing water changing its normal cycle so here what you observe the evapotranspiration rates are also changing alongside and this is the picture that tells us the story then ecological impact 
changes in water flow, temperature fluctuations, all these things impact aquatic ecosystems. And in return, if you observe what is happening, the migration of species, and also if you look into the health of riparian zones, which in turn can disrupt natural water cycle dynamics. So this is a multitude of system analysis that we're talking here. Now, climate change, such a big buzzword these days. Everybody keeps talking about climate change. But remember, climate change has different scales from mini to mass macro it's a great thing to understand that little changes at a smaller level also impacts the global ecosystem so large reservoirs created for hydropower can emit greenhouse gases like methane due to decomposition of organic matter in flooded areas right and also there is a problem where patterns of temperature and precipitation change Right. Apart from this, you'll see loss of wildlife and flora and fauna as well, which is in turn impacting it. So these are the things that we talk about when we say hydroelectricity. So the question is, is it not needed? It's needed. But then the question is, how much is the capability, right? Sustainability involved in this. So this is to be taken care. Now, mitigation strategy. So some hydropower facilities incorporate measures, right? For example, if you observe, we have fish ladders for fish migration, environmental flow releases to particular flow patterns, and then some strategies have been there, but not everywhere. That's the problem here. Now let's look into deforestation, such a big problem, a huge problem across the world. And we are clearing patches after patches. The news comes from Amazon. If you remember that now the lungs of the planet are on peril. So trees play a significant role in water cycle. Right. And deforestation is an essential issue across the world, especially in the tropics, if you observe, which are the rich areas for this. So if tropical countries, which are mostly underdeveloped and developing countries, they need to develop. So they have to clear forests and then it's going to you know, impact the entire world. So what you observe, tree release water right through transpiration so transpire which produces humidity and then in turn it is related to precipitation so if you clear a patch of forest it's going to impact the entire ecosystem and i'm sure you have seen several such news that few people planted some forest in arid area and now it became green after 20 years so imagine forests are such a big thing right so with fewer trees land in the air will become drier and it will lead to aridity Right. So more aridity will go and more desertification will happen. So this is important here. Now look into the recent idea of what has happened. So Norway and parliament has voted to make Norway the first country in the world to exclude biofuels based on high deforestation risks. So here the target is zero deforestation and Norway is the first country to commit to this. Right. Now let's look into urbanization across the world. We all want to be urban beings. Right. So what is happening in urbanization that it reduces permeability because of the construction. Right. Look here, 40 percent evaporation and here 30 percent. Right. So evapotranspiration is a big problem. Right. So concretization of the surface, right, creating urban heat island and also looking into water pollutants being supplied from urban areas. So that's going to be a big problem. Next is irrigation. Of course, not all areas have streams and river. So we have to do irrigation as well. So artificial watering of land is another thing that we have induced. And when we induce something in the natural system, it's always having its impact. So if you observe the problem of using irrigation for soil moisture, that it displaces water from its natural source isn't it and when you you know displace something from its natural source it's not going to be the same so it introduces more salt we have seen soil alkalinization salinization in areas of different areas of india right where we had green revolution and these are creating trouble so irrigation also intensifies hydrological cycle over irrigated regions it's reflected by increasing precipitation evapotranspiration recycling ratio and moisture export so these are the key words to be understood here right and these kind of structural diagrams Diagram schematic diagrams can help you score well in your examination. So do draw these kind of maps if possible. Now, let's look into the impacts again. Dead zones are increasing day by day and harmful algal booms are happening. Now, if you change the natural ecosystem, natural water cycle, what happens? Look into this. So algal boom is a big problem. And here they consume all the oxygen of the water. And what will happen? It will impact the entire ecosystem. 
So this is what is happening and this is producing large amount of carbon dioxide and this is changing ocean acidification is happening. So these things are going to be the big issues, right? So now let's look into the new thing that is happening with advent of science and technology for last 70 years. It's called cloud seeding. Since 1946, when USA using silver iodide and dry ice, it tried to do this ice crystallization in the clouds. This is a very common method, although it's very extensive method in terms of pricing, but then developed nations have been doing it. And then this is going to be a problem. And recent times, because of Dubai flooding, this was also in news. But remember one thing, seeding agents are important here. So salts like silver iodide, potassium iodide, sodium chloride or dry ice, solid carbon dioxide. They are released into the targeted clouds. And then this after the seeding, what happens? The quick droplet formation, and then there is quick rainfall. So if you observe this 15 to 20 plus 5 percent extra rainfall each year can be created by using this. And this method is not natural. It's again an artificial method and it will have an impact. So look into this working mechanism. A tiny ice nuclei is introduced into the certain types of sub freezing clouds. These nuclei provides a base for snowflakes to form which grow, fall and from the clouds and hit the surface. Now, what is it called? Hygroscopic cloud seeding. It disperses salt particles. And the second is glaciogenic cloud seeding. It disperses ice nuclei, right? So these are the two types that we induce. And remember, there was a news with Dubai. But remember, Dubai is not just about cloud seeding. Climate change is to blame for Dubai floods, right? Remember this point importantly. And also, if you look into this newspaper clipping, artificial rain, right? So this is being talked here and some chemicals, again, the same chemicals have been listed and India's first cloud seeding operations were conducted in 1983 by Tamil Nadu government. So that's important to remember. Also in 2015 in Maharashtra to end four year long drought, it was done. And similar kind of thing has been talked about again and again. So these kind of experiments are happening. Now, if you observe further, the recent ones that we have done with hydrological cycle has impacted our one of the major urban ecosystems, that's Dubai, right? It's a world center now. So look here, unprecedented heavy rainfall in Dubai on April 15, 2024. And remember widespread flooding and disruption. So this is being talked about. So if you increase the level of urbanization to the level, look at what is happening in Dubai. So Dubai experienced this heavy rainfall due to combination of factors, not just one factor. The first is strong low pressure systems that has been created. So here this squeeze has been created leading to atmospheric instability and heavy rainfall. Second is heavy thunderstorm and that's going to be very important for other urban areas as well in times to come. So this leads to power thunderstorm right and here the high scale temperature fluctuations in quick time. So extreme events, climate change of course. So micro level, remember this, right? So if you are changing the land use of the city at that level where every day you are doing construction, aerosols are being released every time in the atmosphere. So this is going to create havoc and mesoscale convective system. Medium sized thunderstorms are increasing day by day, especially in arid regions like that. So look into this urban heat islands that are getting created and rapid urbanization is to blame for it. So rapid growth and urbanization of Dubai have altered local weather patterns and look into Sarja, the capital city, third largest emirate in UAE, where a lot of things are going in Hawaii state. So this is something which is to be looked into where we are being susceptible and urban flooding means more loss of properties and lives because it's concentrated area. So this is an important warning for all of us who are living in urban areas of today. So I hope that this basic understanding of how humans impact hydrological cycle and how hydrological cycle alteration is impacting human beings in the same time is importantly understood today. So please share these videos with others and let's meet for another video on hydrology. We'll be talking about river basin, structure, morphology. So it's going to be more interesting. So if you have not subscribed, do subscribe and please, if possible, join to support us. Best wishes.